All right, so the screen that you see in front of you is a little bit of a sign-on screen, although there's no place for a login, but there's a place for this access key. And based on this access key, we're going to navigate the current user to one of three screens. So here we have an admin home screen. It's a blank screen right now. We have a manager home screen and then an agent home screen. So the best way to accomplish what we're going for here is to create a table of values. And each record within that table will have uh, an access key code and an associated screen. And you know, we could also add in a little message that we could display at the top with a notification based on the access key that they give. So the first place I wanna go is the app on start. I've selected the app here in the tree view. I go up to the on start here. A lot of times it's gonna try to take you to the start screen. We wanna change that to on start, okay? We're gonna go over here to the coding window and you open the coding window for a better viewing area by clicking on this downward chevron. Now I wanna create a table value here and we'll do that by using the table function. We use curly braces which a lot of times allows you to define a record of values. So we could call these different fields or, or columns within this table whatever we'd like. We're just going to refer to them in code. Now you could be dynamically pulling this from a data source, a SharePoint list, or a database. However, the client that came to me that wanted me to implement this feature in her application just wanted the static values to be defined within the app. And I did tell her, I'm like, well, if you put that over into a SharePoint list, somebody somehow perhaps could get at that SharePoint list and see all the access codes, which you wouldn't want. So if you don't have a, a really secure database like Dataverse, SQL Server, something like that, I recommended to her that we keep Keep them in the app on start here. Let's, let's just call this role actually. Yeah, so the role. So we got, we have admin, we have manager, we have agent. Okay, so we got role. So let's call this key. The next thing that I wanted to find is the actual screen. We have admin home screen. All right guys, so I'm trying to think of a good access key to be used here. I'm thinking People typically think of a screen like this, not necessarily using a password, which would be alphanumeric, but probably just numeric. It doesn't have to be, okay? But what I was thinking was like a pen, like a five digit pen. And the client has asked for five digits for the, for the key here. I literally have no creativity. So what I thought was, let's just use a little tool here that will take a word and turn it into a number. So for example, the first one we're gonna create here is for an admin. So let's just type in, admin, convert to numeric. I'm going to use this numeric code for the code. I just didn't want to use 1111. All right, so we've got a role, we've got a key, we've got a screen. Let's add in a, let's just call it message. Welcome administrator. So now we need two more records and we need to separate these with a comma. So we have admin. The next thing we need to do is manager. And this is going to be manager home screen. Let's go find out a good code for manager. Okay, we are only looking for five numbers. So I'm just gonna take the first five and we will copy that, paste that here. So this will be an agent. There's welcome agent. Let's go find a code for an agent. There's a good code. Now let's add that to a collection with a function called clear collect. Microsoft recommends that we name all of our collection variables with a COL as a recommended practice. So I'll call this rule keys. We put a comma and then the second parameter is the value that we're gonna put in that collection. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna run this, run on start. Now I know that table's in there. What we could do is drop a data table. We wanna put a back color to this and we could set this data table up to look at our table. The only reason I like to use tables is just a quick and dirty little control I could drop on a screen just to see what the values of a, in this case, collection is. So this data table, we have the items property selected and we can just paste in the name of our collection there. Now what you could do is you could just select a variable like this and you can see all the, the values here, okay? But look at this, we could just select everything here, hit add, and it's gonna add it so we can see everything. Yeah, let's not try to show the screen. The screen isn't really text that we can display. So let's remove that screen there, all right? So this is what we're working with. So a user is going to type in an access code, okay? Yeah, I'll move it down here. 
All right, so this is a text box here. It's called password field. As you can see off here to the right, we have a property called mode, and it's already been set up to be a password. So if I were to run this and start typing in here, do you see? So let's get the name of that text box there, password field. I'm gonna copy to the clipboard here by hitting control C. Now on the submit button, this is where the magic is gonna occur. This is where we're gonna put our code. The first thing that we wanna do is take what the user typed in this text box text property. We're gonna take what the user typed in that text box and we're gonna look inside the table that has been constructed in the app on start. There's no match, we're gonna say, sorry, access denied. If it is found, we're gonna find the related screen, move them to that screen and display a message. So we will be doing a lookup. The data source will be our collection. We're gonna look inside that collection and we're gonna be looking for the key and see if it exactly matches what the user has typed in that text box. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to do an update context I'm gonna create a context variable to hold the record that was returned from that collection. So I'll call the name of the context variable to be LOC, that is a recommended Microsoft practice for naming your local variables, LOC, short for local. So we'll call it loc result. We use a, a colon there, use another curly brace, ending a parenthesis. Very good, and then we have got the result here in this variable. All right, so for the first thing that we wanna check is to see if that result has anything in the role property. So if anything was actually returned, we wanna make sure that we actually got a result back from matching up what the user typed with the keys in our collection. So what we'll do is we'll say if blank. So we'll just try this out. We'll just do a notify. If you guys aren't familiar with notify, just simply display something at the top of the screen with a message. So the name of the function is is, is blank, not if blank. <laughs> All right, so let's try this out here. Let's type in a bunch of gibberish and we'll hit submit and see what we get. It says sorry. All right, so that does work. All right, so let's try a real code or a real key. Hit the submit and we don't get any. So we know that that actually works. So let's give him more information than just sorry. We'll say sorry. Sorry, that is invalid. What's great about notify is that we can give it other parameters such as the notification types. So we can say notification type error. So it's gonna appear in red, letting them know, hey, something bad happened. <laughs> and we can also specify how long we want it to be displayed. So I would think three seconds would be long enough for somebody to read that message. You can make it longer or shorter if you want. And these are milliseconds, okay? All right, otherwise, if it is not blank, what we'd wanna do is do a navigate and we'll wanna go to, we'll look at that, that result that we got and we will make it go to the, the screen. Now we can specify our own screen transitions. We'll see screen transition dot. I personally like fade, but you could pick from a few of these here, okay? I'm gonna pick fade. So after the screen transition, I'll just leave it at that. We'll navigate away. Now, before we navigate away, I actually wanna do another notification here, and it's gonna be dynamic. Okay, we do want a semicolon at the end, okay? Instead of an error, it's gonna be success, because they successfully typed in a good key there. And instead of hard coding a message, what we'll do is we'll say loc result dot message. Okay, we'll have that display for three seconds as well. So we're gonna make sure we get the notification off before we navigate away. And this should work, just so we know that everything is working, okay? Let's go over here to the admin home screen. Let's add in a label and let's access app.activescreen.name. Okay, here we go. Admin home screen, very good. We'll go over here, we'll paste it here. We'll go to agent home screen, we'll paste it there. So whenever we actually sort of navigate around, we know what screen we're on because these screens are blank and my client is gonna develop those screens on her own. She just wanted me to do this portion of the application for her. Okay, so let's type in a good code. So I'm gonna copy over the admin code. I'm gonna paste it in there and I'm gonna hit submit. Okay, I don't want the browser to save it. Welcome in administrator, there's the message, admin home screen, very good. And they have no way of getting back. <laughs> you know what I might do? <laughs> Is, uh, is type in back here. And then I'll actually copy this. I'll delete this, paste, delete that, paste. 
Okay. So this is going to be more fun. All right. So I'm going to hit the button. There we go. Welcome administrator. I'm going to click on this label. It should take me back home. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel. And that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. So we probably don't need this little data table down here anymore. I would just keep it up there just so you guys can see the values. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Now, something that my client recommended is when this is clicked on that they can actually see the values in here. That's very easy. Okay. So what we're going to do is when they click on this icon, so this is an icon that, that she brought over to the screen here. And for action, we'll do an update context and we'll call this loc show password. Okay. And that's going to hold a Boolean true false value. We we'll use a colon there and we'll just reverse whatever was in there. Okay. What we can do just to sort of show you what's going on. I can bring over a label and I can make this label to have white text. Let's just put it here at the top and then we'll just actually show whatever's in there. Look, show password. Okay. So right now it's false. And as we click on it, you see it toggles back between true and false. Okay. So let's actually use that value for this text box. We'll go over to the, the right column here with all the properties. We'll go find that property. It's called mode. Do you see this mode? It goes single line, multi line, or password. So we want to dynamically change this from password to single line if it is true. So what we do is we'll go into mode, open this up. And we'll say if show password, we'll say text mode dot single line. Otherwise, we'll have it be password. Okay, so we'll run it. We'll click on this. You see that? Now we could get fancier with this little icon based on what the value is. If show password, we could say icon cancel otherwise show the view icon okay so you see that could do that now there's also a different icon now let's so instead of cancel let's use cancel badge i like that better showing the password and they'll see this icon change letting them know if they click on that it would cancel out okay and let's test to make sure everything still works okay very good, very good. All right. All right, so I'm gonna exit out and go back into design mode. We don't need this label anymore. What else should we do to the screen? What I think we should do is for this text box, I think we should reset it. And I think it should be reset right after we made a decision. So we could do that. How you reset it is you call reset and you pass it into it the name of the control that you wanna reset. So we could do that. Let's just sort of test that. So we'll do that. So we're welcomed. We're in the admin home screen. So if you go back, it's not going to be in there. So let's say if this is a kiosk machine and somebody signed in as an admin, they're in this screen and they walked away. Let's say we've got a timer on the screen. If there's no action, it just sort of returns back. You wouldn't want that password to sit there because somebody could come up and click on it and actually see the admin code that was there, okay? Now, if you guys saw a little double icon with a little view icon, there were like two of them on top of each other, or one was on top of the other, that's actually a Microsoft Edge browser uh, feature. That's why you saw that, so sort of weird. I don't think that you see that in Chrome. I just wanted to mention that to you guys in case you were wondering what that was. What other cool stuff should we put in this screen? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, for some reason, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, gotta hurry, click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's gonna autoplay some other video. Which you probably don't want.